it's the end of the world. The brightness and the vibrancy on the S24 Ultra screen may not be as good as the S23 Ultra. It's screen gate. No, not really. And I don't want to. I, I don't want to mess with anybody here. I, I want to talk about this because I've seen a lot of people saying the screen does look dull. It doesn't look as vibrant. The vivid mode really isn't making any sort of a difference when it comes to the S24 Ultra screen, which is something that you probably wouldn't anticipate because we went from a 1750 nits max brightness screen to a 2600 nits max brightness screen. So you're like, okay, if I'm using these side by side, really they should likely appear very similar in vibrancy, excluding how bright they are. Well, I think there's a few reasons for this. I don't think it's the end of the world. And quite honestly, when I look at both of them, I don't even notice that much of a difference, but I think it is slightly tangible. But is it the end of the world? Maybe, maybe not. Let's do some investigative research and take a look now. Okay, so here we have them. S23 Ultra, S24 Ultra. And the brightness meters are, are very similar that I have on these, but I mean, of course, it's not going to be a 100% translation because, well, the, Brit, the, the brightness on the screen is not the same. One thing I do want to educate you on real quick, though, when it comes to brightness, this isn't really a brightness issue. So the S23 Ultra maximum nits, which is a measurement for how bright the screen gets, is 1,750. That's maximum, peak. That means auto brightness outside in the sun, it will automatically adjust up that high. The highest you can manually get this one is 1,200. I don't know the highest you can manually get the S24 Ultra yet because it hasn't been released, but 2600 nits max brightness. So that means it gets quite a bit brighter out in the sun where you can see it better. I'd wager it's about 1600 indoors. So you're still going to have whenever you put the max brightness all the way up. That's not what people are talking about. But you can see, like, I think the colors look a little bit more vibrant over here on the S23 Ultra versus the S24 Ultra. Like, it feels a little flat. I mean, even looking at a lot of the icons, like you can see here with, like, the... All right, let's look at the uphold icon right here. It looks a little bit more green, a little bit, looks a little more flat over here. Maybe that has something to do with the display itself, but I don't think it's a screen. As you can see here, the S24 Ultra screen, is it's less reflective than the S23 Ultra. And I actually like that. I think that's a good quality. I don't really think that's it, though. I, I want to show you something, and we'll take a look at this real quick. So I want to show you something here in the display settings that we can kind of adjust and see I always keep mine on vivid so right here whenever it comes to screen mode traditionally if you change these settings it seems to make more of a difference but as you can see if you put it on all the way warm it doesn't really look any different you put it on all the way cool it doesn't really look any different <laughs> now let's take a look at it here with this food plate so you can see a little bit of a difference there like, it looks a little bit more orange, just a little bit more brownish there, and it's a little bit more blue over here. You can adjust the white balance, and that's something that can give you a little bit better perception on the screen. You know, it matters a little bit more in some, like, you can see, a, like, a slight change in this, but it's not, not overall a big difference. Like, if you switch from natural to vivid, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> and even here, I mean, it changes a little bit, but overall... I think that there's something to do with the tuning and something to do with the vibrancy of the screen. You can go to advanced settings, and this stuff can make quite a bit of a difference if you change these. You can get different outputs as well. So you can kind of customize this, which is nice because that's something that you can't do with like an iPhone, right? <laughs> iOS and Apple are pretty locked in. They want you to look at it how they want you to look at it. So... Those, that's kind of something you can adjust there and look at, but the thing is, is it's not, it doesn't make a big difference. And it doesn't really seem to be making up for some of the vibrancy stuff too. And then there's also like adaptive true tone, which you can turn on or off. And then there's also adaptive brightness. So there's a lot of different things that you can mess with on the screen to try and get a better appearance. But even though we've messed with some of those things, I still think that the S23 Ultra screen does look a little bit more vibrant. And like I said, Samsung says that they're going to come out with a fix for that. But at the same time, like I see where the concern is, especially if you put them right next to each other, you can tell a little bit more. It's hard to get it to necessarily translate over into a video because like you can only see so much here. Uh, the naked eye is much much more perceptible to some of this stuff than what you see on the screen. But yeah, I don't think it's a reflective 
coding on the screen. I don't think that it's necessarily the tuning. I, I well, what you can do and adjust. I think that naturally there's something that they're going to have to adjust on the back end, and then maybe also allow a little bit more flexibility in the tuning because. Even when you go in there and change it from natural, you change it to vivid, you mess the stuff around, like it doesn't really change that much. So, I mean, that's very similar with the S23 Ultra, but we have this baseline level of vibrancy that I think does matter to some people. Um, so yeah, hopefully they'll fix that to where they'll have like more vibrant mode <laughs> and that'll be cool for everyone because then you have options, which is one thing I love about Android is options, but I don't even think it's the end of the world, but I, I see where folks are, are upset with this and yeah. There it is. So, like I said, I, there might be a little bit to it. There's some difference here, and I think a lot of it actually has to do with software tuning of the screen. We do know that the screen is less reflective as well, which I pointed out. I mean, it is it is less reflective, and that's a super nice feature. So, there are people that think that maybe it's a screen, whatever. We've talked about most of this, but I think that a fix is coming. I believe Samsung has already mentioned that they're going to fix this. And I don't think it's broken. I, I think it's just... Some folks really, really like that super vibrant screen. And I don't blame you. That, that's a characteristic that we've come to expect with Samsung for a long time. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. For the longest time, lots of folks didn't like Samsung screens because they were too unrealistic looking, too saturated, the greens were too green, the blues were too blue. It just didn't look natural even though it looked gorgeous and beautiful. So maybe with the way that it was tuned this time, you know, a little bit down. Like maybe not, not there, right? And... I, like I said, I haven't really cared that much. I haven't really noticed that much. I was using it happily for a few hours and I saw the comments. I'm like, what's going on here? So then, you know, you compare apples to apples. <laughs> Pun intended. They're not apples. Anyway, you get it. Uh, but Samsung's to Samsung's. And yeah, there's a little bit of a vibrancy disparity there. But I think it's going to be fixed very soon. And even if it's not, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. But if it is for you, I totally understand. I don't want to delegitimize your frustration with this because coming from all the past Samsung phones and kind of expecting the same kind of screen experience, that would irk me. Uh, me being one of the people who thought that it was always a little bit too much, uh, I, I don't, I was pretty happy when I looked at it. So it, it's just one of those things where depending on your eyes, depending on your perception, depending on the situation, depending on your expectations, depending on what you want, like there's a lot of depending ons here. I don't think it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you can break the back of the iPhone or, oh, the iPhone's heating up. Like, this is something that quite easily, I believe, can be fixed by Samsung issuing a software update and then we'll be on with our lives and you can enjoy your phone and everybody can enjoy their phone because hopefully they'll get it fixed where you can just adjust the contrast settings in the screen on the phone like you could with previous phones and it will actually respond and do what it's supposed to, right? So that's all I got. Signing off here. I'm done talking about this. If you're not done talking about it, go to the comment sections and then we can keep talking about it. But for now, that's all I got. So if you have any questions or comments, you know where to go. If you enjoy the video, if you like this stuff, you want more Samsung content, please hit the like and the subscribe button. Come back. You're in the right place. I make videos pretty much every day. Like very seldom do I take a day off, but maybe I will soon, but not right now. <laughs> so that's all I got. As always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.